All right, folks, welcome back to the American Dota 2 League. It is going to be season number two in a best of two series between Union Gaming and the House is Down. It's game number two. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, it is sponsored by none other than Steel Series, brought to you by High Ground TV. And of course, my High Ground TV compadre is joining me. Uh, Kyle Guy, how are you doing, sir? Mod, I'm doing great. Let's go ahead and finish things up here in game number two of our second two-game series here between Union Gaming and the House is Down. I'm excited to bring it home. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, joining us as well, our stats man, Greg, what is hip? Another, of course, high ground TV member. And here we are. Game number two. This two-game series about to end, obviously. And, and we'll see who takes it. THG, they had a strong lead in the early game. Kind of lost it a bit into the mid-game to UG. Of course, coming back in, very strong play from them. And all of a sudden, getting a couple of Roches, getting a couple of team fights going their way, looking a bit questionable the entire time through. I feel as though Union Gaming didn't necessarily throw it away, but they certainly could have won that one for sure. I, I, I think it was just a couple of misplays from a couple of their heroes just getting caught at a position. They lost a set of racks, and they could not come back from it after that point. I agree with that, of course. I would feel that it was just a couple of little, you know, missteps coming out from Union Gaming, you know, team fights they shouldn't have really taken, you know, a bit of commitment issues here and there, and it just kind of really didn't work out. And in the end, the house is down. We're able to, you know, grab a hold of the win and take it home, especially on the back of that razor right there at the end. It was very, very nice. And, well, as far as this draft goes, it looks like Smot, we will not be seeing an Ember Spirit at all tonight. That's disappointing because that hero is fun as hell to watch. Um, Radiant who doesn't want to see a guy jump around, throw bowls on people, and just in general take the game as late as possible, if, if necessary. He could be aggressive early too, and he's one of those heroes that's just so strong early on. It could be so strong late as well, and it's, it's, it's a shame you don't get to see him, but... That does leave the option for other heroes that are just as good available. We've talked about the oh, yeah. Dazzle. Ancient Apparition, we have not seen at all tonight, surprisingly enough. One of those heroes, you're like, yeah, I mean, we're going to see him every game. Nope, not not, not this evening. Ten but at least on the South American side. And, you know, Centaur also still in the pool. So if the house is down and decide to pick up a quick offlaner there, they definitely have all of the sweet pickings. I mean, all of the prime cut offlaners. No, Shadow Shaman really pick up for them. Something we typically see on the Eastern side of Dota. They definitely favor the Shadow Shaman pickup. And I'm not sure the exact stats i know i'm something great can look into and he has plenty of time as this is a you know lengthy draft to go through still but i believe shao shaman has a very very high win rate i think almost over 60 percent or so in 6.8 so he, he's, it's definitely a solid choice in the game regardless it's a good hero but for some reason or another and, and this is just me rambling on i just i can't get i can't get down with that Why hero and I, I just think people value him too highly of course that's just my just nonsense Radiant caster speed talking, and honestly, he's probably and, and is a very good hero, but just for whatever reason, when I see him, I'm kind of like, are you really, you're going to pick that first? Okay, I guess that's good, but that's fine, I suppose. The Union Gaming come out, they pick up the puck, they pick up the Ancient Apparition, so Dream Goal to keep everybody nearby, Ice Blast to blow everybody else up. And I love that pickup coming out. I, I do like the early puck, not sure if it would have been banned, but hey, why not? If you're going to go for it, go for it. Yeah, both the Shadow Shaman and Pucker, you know, they probably could have held out those picks a little bit longer and not had to sweat too much about them potentially being banned. But I'm excited you didn't get bring out two heroes we have yet to see tonight. So the H and Apparition and the Puck. So we'll see if it's going to be like an Owie style H Apparition where you just kind of commit to see, to, you know, early in the game, be aggressive. Use the Chilling Touch. If you want to be really cheesy and quirky, maybe grab something like a Weaver, throw the Chilling Touch on yourself, and on the Weaver, do out some early you know, hits and see if you can get a couple pickups on the road. But down the line, you want to get those levels, you want to get to level 6, then quickly level 11, get maybe an Agnum Scepter, and really use the full potential of that Ice Blast. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you build towards anytime you see an Ancient Apparition. It's level 11. Sometimes you see a Midas trying to help you along the way, and even towards that Agnum Scepter. You rarely see anybody build anything other than like brown boots into an axe. It just, it just, that's just kind of the way the ancient apparition is played nowadays. And like you mentioned, chilling touch is still a very good, good ability and can be combined Ten up with the weaver to be remaining. extraordinarily good. The house is down. Pick up Luna again at the second slot. And, and honestly, I don't know if I was really that impressed with Neo folks playing the first game. There were a couple of times when his farm wasn't all that great. I mean, he didn't really sit back and farm that much. He was more kind of a fighting force with his team, which isn't bad when you're ahead. But if he was behind in that game, he would have just been throwing his life away. Luckily, they kind of, you know, reined it in, got him some CS, got him some last hits, got him some kills, got him some assists, got him some towers especially. And they just went from there. We'll see if they have the same game plan. I mean, as it stands right now, Union Gaming have to be aware that this is going to be a similar game as the one we saw last time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree. Um, I, 
I think the house is down. They're, they're going to need to look at what they want to do for their own personal offlaner. Actually, same goes for Union Gaming. Nyx Assassin was something we talked about a lot in the last previous draft and is still available in this pool. Clockwork, the same. Union Gaming, if you want to grab that up for themselves and just really have some heavy, heavy initiation and go with more of a single core kind of lineup to contest Five the Luna. Seconds, we'll see. You know, a lot of options to work with here. House is down. Need to look to push forward, maybe pick up their secondary support to go alongside the Shaman. Maybe they want to build into this heavy push power they already have going with the Luna Glaive and the Wards if they want to continue on, grab a Dragonite up for themselves or what have you, but uh, it was all about the pushes last game, and Houses Down want to keep that trend going. And I, and I feel like Union Gaming know it's coming, though, and, and that might not mean anything. Yeah, they could, you know, try to play the same type of Dota they played last game and still have a rough time, but now there's a Doom that they have to deal with Dying on top of everything else, and that's going to make Puck's life a living hell. This Doom, a bit greedy, mind you. Dooms, generally, I mean, if you're going to go for a mid-Doom, if you're going to go for an off-lane Doom, if you're going to go for even a jungle Doom, I think it's greedy when you already have that safe land farmer and the Luna. So uh, they could do something like Luna, Shadow Shaman, and another hero as an aggro trialing top, send the Doom solo safe, and I guess that works out. I don't know how good Luna's going to be in that aggro trial lane. You already have to deal with an Ancient Apparition with the Chilling Touch. So I like to pick up against the Puck, but I think it might be a bit greedy coming out from THD. I'm not sure if you Five agree, though. Remaining. Well, I mean, we'll see. There's a lot of flexibility that can be worked with. You never know. We could see even a Doom middle. I mean, it could be entirely on 1987, his style of play, and what they want to roll with here. So there are a lot of options. They're not giving away a lot of information towards Union Gaming. They don't even know what they're going to be contesting in the mid lane. This could be an off lane Puck as well, we've seen as of late. But uh, yeah, it's it's still questionable. These last two picks for each team will definitely give away more of an idea of what they're looking to do, whether Houses Down want to continue on with this push strat or whether Union Gaming want to go for some more heavy initiation on their own part. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the name of the game for them. I mean, they already have the puck, and that generally means you want to try to fight with a team fight hero. And they already have two. You can consider the Ancient Apparition one of those heroes, and Puck or Rubik, excuse me, whatever he can steal as well. So now it comes down to what do you want to safe lane with? What do you want to off lane with? A sensor would have been huge in this scenario for Union Gaming. Unfortunately, it's banned up. The Bat Rider as well, so they don't have that lockdown potential. Clockwork might be good here just to get a couple of pick offs. Somebody on the, like a Rasta getting picked off by that, of course, hookshot initiation to the Cogs. And on top of all of that, you might go for something we don't see a whole lot of anymore is a Bounty Hunter. That could be nice for our pick offs, but not really too team fighty. Um, still, a lot of available options. They need that safe lane farmer on top of all of that. And sometimes you do see something like a Faces Void with an AA, throw the Ice Blast into the Chronosphere, which would be good up against a Doom and a Luna, one of the hardest carries in the game. They're going to go for the Viper, though, and this is somebody that Radiant is really Doom. good early on in the game, not so much late, can really lock down the Doom, can really lock down the Luna as well. Two kind of speedier heroes. With Viper Strike, it kind of makes them negligible in team fights, and you can pick them off. This is this just screams early game. It's thriving early game from Union Gaming. If they can win this game at like 20 or 30 minutes in, and yeah, they'll be in a good position, obviously. Or, if, I mean, I guess if they could take this game towards 20 and 30. And if it goes past 40, maybe the house is down is okay. But Ten mm, seconds I'm not sure, remaining. though. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I think that the prime time Five for Union Gaming remaining. as of right now is going to be in that mid-game. When Sam, Agent Apparition gets his level 6 online, same goes Good for time. Puck. And now the Viper, you know, with his heavy kiting ability, they could have some good pickoff potential to follow things up and catch out maybe Luna, who's trying to just reserve farm for herself down the road. So Houses Down need to consider maybe putting up a little bit of defenses for themselves in case they have to go into a mid-game. Maybe they consider looking at someone who can delay the game out a little bit longer or just have a good safety net in case things get a little too hairy. Yeah, Dazzle is actually one of those heroes that would help the houses down a lot. I mean, just because there is that Viper available, you would have to have some Shadow Grave. I even thought about Shadow Demon for a second, and I'm like, well, wait a second. Dazzle's has not been banned out yet, so you can pick him. He can certainly support you. You have a support missing right now for THD. Why not go for the Dazzle? We saw Union Gaming play it last game. It didn't quite work out for them, but it's still a hero that works exceedingly well on this lineup. And they're thinking about it, honestly. I, I think Shallow Grave here is a big pickup for them. Um, just because it can keep everybody alive. Obviously, the Shadow Wave, that physical damage as well, keeping everybody up and ready to go. I don't know. They're going to go for the Marana, though. And now this is... Dia team back. Now you're wondering where they lane all of this. And it's, it's starting to be a little bit less clear, I think, for THD. I'm definitely scratching my head here. I mean, Marana, this is so far looking like a potential support Marana get up here, unless yeah. they want to put something to match with, or whether Ten it's that Bane, that Shadow Demon, or what have you, and kind of just 
twerk the lanes around a bit or maybe a bit of a throwback and throw Murana even in the off lane. It can yeah. be done. We've seen it in the past plenty of times. Murana's one of those great heroes you could pretty much throw anywhere. But uh, yeah, it, it still leaves a lot of questions, not only for us, but I'm sure for Union Gaming as well, is what is the house of, you know, what is the house is down thinking? Yeah, and honestly, Union Gaming, like we talked about last game, they could absolutely go for that five man aggression early on, just scout the lanes out, see what's going on and make a decision from that point to where to send everybody. Uh, whether it's going to be an aggro trial lane, which could be pretty good, a defensive trial lane, whether they can even split up and duel in, which we've seen teams do before, dodge a trial lane if they have to. There's a lot of options for them. You talked about Ramarana being that support. It certainly could be. Remaining. But with the Shadow Shaman and Shackles, it is a good decision. The arrow, it's going to lock Reserve up there. Time. But is that going to be enough damage? Is it going to be the lockdown that they're looking for? Yes, they'll have that one Ten pickoff, but now you have to deal remaining. with chilling touch damage, which is going to go on to everybody. I mean, because you're just going to get Five everybody hit. Remaining. So they have to make a choice quick on this next band, though. Three seconds left. It is going to be that clockwork. Like I talked about, they need that offlane hero. Way to take out that initiator from the pool. Now Union Gaming, they don't have as much as they would like in terms of the offlane pool right now. There's still a couple of heroes they can work with, but I mean, you look at this offlane pool, it's kind of limited, man. It's getting limited. I mean, the, still Nyx Assassin's the best one to pop out that I would, I would say as an offlaner. I mean, Nature's Prophet's no longer available if they want to try to lay out some sort of rat to fall back on, but... Uh, I do like that the house is down to have a lot of wave clearing on their side. And that's something that's pretty crucial if you do want to push it to a later game. Marana with her Star Storm, obviously, you got the Aether Shock, and Luna with her Glades can clear out the waves pretty quickly in case things get a little hostile towards the base. But Union Gaming now pull out their bit of a trump card, it would seem. Morphling now grabbed, and this could be played in multiple ways in itself. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'm. Uh, we got three different potential mid lane and off laners and safe laners here. I mean, Union Gaming, I don't really know don't what know the what's plan's going to be. I mean, it's just pretty much grab the heroes, throw them in the air, and whenever they land, they'll just go with that. Yeah, it's just like, all right, flip a coin. Five that's what's going to happen here. Let's let's just see what goes what, what goes with it. So suddenly, you, yeah, like you said, they have, oh, reserve God, reserve time. time. Please pick a hero with TSG. Okay, they go for the DK. All right. Push. Yeah, so, I mean, that's going to be a Marana support now this time. On the side of Union Gaming, though, now it's looking like you could send Puck off lane, but it's most likely going to be mid. Aggressive trial lane with Viper being the farming hero in the aggro. Solo safe morphling, and now it looks like this is going to be very difficult coming out, I think, from, of course, uh, THG, just because they're, they're going to have to deal with a lot of aggression early on here. We are going to jump into the game, ladies and gentlemen. It is game two. It's the last game of the evening here for the ADL. Season two, day number one. It's been a lot of fun thus far, but here we go. And I just wanted to show you guys real quick that, of course, the ADL ticket, $3.99 in the Dota store. You also receive this beautiful black monolith HUD. I'm showing it to you guys right now. Just purchased up a ticket to show you guys and make sure you guys get a look-see as to what you'll be getting here. And I, I think it looks beautiful, that black and gold. Uh, black and yellow even, if you would want to call it that. But right now, four-man aggression coming out from UG. And in fact, actually, more like a solo safe lane Viper this time around rather than that solo safe lane Morphling that we thought, or at least I thought. Yep. And uh, I know we want to roll with potentially some introductions here, but these these gang bugs, they're, they're ganging it out right now. In the, in the, who wants to cross the line? And we want to see if they see any aggression. They're kind of scouting out, getting a bit more information. They throw down an early ward to try to prevent the extra double pull coming out for THD, though. And it looks like they will begin to pull back and uh, go back to their lane association. Yeah, absolutely. They don't want to try to anything too crazy here. They'll throw up the ward just to make sure this camp is warded. Doom can't get that devour early on, and he can't jungle. As it turns out, not sure where everyone's going to land up just yet, but we'll figure that out right now with THD. Some introduction. Well, the studious, he'll be on the Shadow Shaman right now. And it looks like, of course, he was the he actually was disconnected the, the last game. They had the stand-in, which of course was Faka, who came through. But now he is back in the game. Neofolk will be on the Luna in this bottom lane. We'll have actually Faka here as well in the Mirana now. So it looks like they subbed somebody else out. 1987 gonna be on that Dragon Knight for THD and to round it all out in that top lane. It's gonna be the offlane Doom played by Zoidberg. So that's gonna be THD. Union Gaming, the Peruvian squad, as they quickly deward this bottom river, it's going to be Pimps or Pimps. I'm, I still didn't catch how I properly pronounced that name, and I definitely apologize. Uh, Lo siento ahead of time, my friend. Rubik is leading up the staircase right now, right behind him. We got Jericho or hashtag the bomb on the ancient apparition. And leading the front there, uh, Carry for Core for this lane, already getting an early 
Chilling touch. Elo now making a move. The lift pull back. They want Luna. The damage. Oh. Now that chilling touch, man, that has got to be one of the best, if not the best, level one skills in terms of aggression. Oh yeah, it just the damage coming out was absolutely disgusting. Evo waveforms through to secure the kill. Nicely played there, and already this Luna having a rough time. They've got to keep the pressure up. Evo also has to be careful. He doesn't have mana to waveform again, and wrapping around Faka is here, but. Do we even have time to get into more aggressions or initiations oh. or uh, introductions? Ewo Ewo got hit by an arrow real nicely on the sidelines, by the way, but he will not be able. They will not be able to make the jump on him. But lift back. They want more blood right now. They're looking to take the Shao Shaman. Vestius has to make a retreat back, and he will be able to get away. And I know I should be moving my camera to other lanes to continue the introductions, but the story is all about this bottom try yeah, on try. Yeah, I know you're right. It's tough. Can we get there quick? All right, we. I think we have a respite now. Okay, right. Mid lane is going to be Cinderella on the puck, and finally top, it's going to be an offlane contention. Uh, Nova going to be matching up against the Doom. Yeah, all right, back down to the bottom lane. Here we go, boys. Just making yeah. sure we catch everything. They have the chilling touch up, and we can see Lucian Beam going to fly through. Uh, looks like it will not be as action-packed as anticipated as everyone's backing off now. They're under the tower. They don't want to fight there. So we'll get a chance to see what's going on in the mid lane, which is 10 last hits for Cinderella, playing that puck. Doing real well against 1987. He's going to try to get rune control. Denied. Assuming that rune going to be down bottom. Sidorol might roam forward, or excuse me, 1987 as well could do the same. Zoidberg and Nova in that top lane. Just a little harass going both ways. Nova should have a good time. Leveling two points at a poison attack. Wants to be very aggressive against Zoidberg. He does have Scorched Earth regen up, and he actually put an extra point into it just to make sure he stays alive. They're scouting out the bottom lane. They saw that Jericho had picked up the, the rune after quickly placing a ward. They thought for a moment maybe they could shoot the arrow into the river and catch him out, but he's going to take the long road all the way, be safe, not head up the sidelines and get caught out. So, man, just going back to that chilling touch, that is serious damage. We're talking 50 bonus damage for three attacks coming out from three different people. That's like 400, what, 450 bonus hard-hitting damage going out in that Luna, not even accounting for all the additional nukes they already have with the waveform and the lift and everything. It's unheard of, so you can't afford to get caught out like that. So, quick first blood to Union Gaming. Um, I'm trying to think of how it would match up this top lane, though. Doom is definitely having a bit of a hard time. I mean, Viper has no problem zoning him out. Yeah, Viper's just one of the best zoners in the game. There's not many that can deal with that kind of damage early on. And, and Nova can just kind of secure his own CS here. Doom will get levels, and that's kind of what he needs. And he can head to the jungle and, of course, get some Devour creeps as well. So it's not that bad for him. Um, it could be a lot worse as any other offlaner right now. But as it stands, Ewo getting some decent last hits down here. 12 for him. 3 only for the Luna. But we've seen Luna's come back. Telekinesis pushing him back on Neofolk just to... Kind of harassed there, interestingly enough, not doing anything else really. Arrow flying through mid lane, Sidorol. That is a full duration arrow. Dragon Tail might fly through. He's gonna use it. Is there enough damage? No mana to use that, of course. Breathe fire. Sidorol will jaunt away. You gotta admire the brass from Faka just being able to shoot those arrows. And man, he's a sniper, but they cannot secure these kills. Not on a puck, Mott. A puck has got to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest, mid laners to take down when you go for a gank. I mean, you're going to have to commit a lot, and that was one of the best cases they could get. Full duration arrow with a dragon tail to follow up, but still not enough. This puck is a, a slippery little bugger. Yeah, and I'd argue maybe if he had his breathe fire mana, they could have gotten that kill, but even that, it's still questionable. So... Uh, you know, Sidorol's playing is about as good as he can play in this mid lane puck battle. And of course, he's got the boots of speed up, ready to fly out to him. He's got his uh, illusion bottle now going as well. Chilling touch down bottom, and all of a sudden, that's the sign that you need to back off for THG. Like, you see that chilling touch come out, you say, nope, 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 we back off under the tower. But even under the tower, is it safe for you? And it looks like as of right now, it is. The wave's not pushing in, they should be okay. The Marana's roaming back around. She's level two, so the Mo roaming Marana is not doing that much. She is level two. That's not too bad. It allows, of course, the Luna and Vestius to get experience in their own right and it looks like chilling touch will go away again as we have 16 seconds for that to be cooled down the story top still stays the same no but now getting towards those treads getting a ring of basilius next to it as well i'd imagine and still leading the cs battle there mid lane 1987 actually leading against this puck puck has to back off now he doesn't want to take breathe fire harass telekinesis back neofolk not going to get brought back through they don't want to fight him just yet hashtag the bomb has that chilling touch ready to go they're going to spot out vestius Maybe. They ping him out, potentially. They're gonna try to go. There's gonna be the cold feet. Shaq is gonna fly through, wait for him. Arrow's up on Jericho. He might fall first, but they trade one for one. Neofolk taking a lot of damage. Ewo, he's hard hitting. One more right click will do job, and it will. PJ gonna pick it up right now. Looking for Faka. Can they grab this kill? Ewo does have wait for him. They're gonna go far. They're gonna try to die for the kill, but the leak coming out from Faka to save his own life. A 2 one, two for one trade, excuse me, and Union Gamers getting the better end once again.
Yeah, they're definitely getting the better of this laning phase. This Luna is not happy. I mean, when you're comparing five and OCS to this Morphling's dominant 27 and nine, she is having a real hard time in this lane. I know Moran's trying to make plays happen elsewhere, try to divert the attention from this bottom lane, but they can't do it. Luna's just finding no opportunity to get the farm she needs. Desperation Lucid Beam's even to go out and get him back, but you're not gonna be able to stop this Morphling. They need reinforcements, they need more backup. Yeah, they do. Maybe your room coming out from 1987. We talked about it in the last game. You might want to try to push mid with that Dragonite. Silence is up. There is that Invis up. Telekinesis is not going to land. They did not have any detection. It looks like coming out from the Rubik or the Puck. Faka, very close to dying. Thanking his lucky stars. He picked up that Invis rune. And now it looks like they will head back. Nick Sidorall will have that Dream Coil to go if they want to fight on 1987. He has a point in Dragon Blood, so he's got the extra armor going. Here we go. PJ coming through. Just going to try to deny and then back off. But as it stands... Three to one. I, they should continue the aggression down bottom, I think. I think they should keep this Rubik down here. No, I agree, but I guess they're no. looking to make plays happen elsewhere in the meantime. H Apparition just holding his own, playing the babysitter role for Morphling, who might not necessarily need at this point. He already has, you know, the waveform to work with in case he gets in trouble. I don't think that the, the Luna and the Rasta alone will have enough lockdown to take care of him, so we'll see if he commits to this. He does need to try to get that level 6, so splitting any sort of XP can slow that down just yeah. a little bit, especially when you're trying to hang far back and allow everything towards that Morphling, so... He needs to focus maybe on moving on the side, throw out a feel like cold feats on maybe a jungle creep and just get some sort of side gold or XP going for himself. Yeah, even jungling as a tandem would be good at this point just to get some sort of experience here. And I'd, I'd agree with that 100%. So that might be an option for them. They are going to back off right now. Ewo's picking up his Midas. It's flying out to him currently. Luna, nowhere near something like that. Only 10 last hits at the bank. And Ross is not getting much else in terms of experience. We're only top, though. You do have, of course, Marana looking for an arrow on this Viper. And they do have Doom ready to go, I believe. I mean, yeah, it's ready. It's going to fly. The arrow is going to hit on Nova. This guy is hitting arrows left and right. There's the Doom. Nova in trouble. Should fall from this. There's going to be the Hellbear smash. Thunder clap. Boom. Dead. Nice pick off. But that signals down bottom that Yuji try to push in tower and do some damage to it. Nope, and they will not succeed. They're hunting, they're pulling out the Bloodhounds, trying to catch anyone they can. The pings are going out, but they're not going to be there. Luna moving in, not level 6 just yet, can't really take advantage of an Eclipse. So instead, they'll have to just sit far, sit far back, throw out a few Lucid Beams, but they're feeling pretty aggressive here. They're throwing out the slows. They get the lift. They catch it on Rasta. Rasta, unfortunately, has no boots to get away from this one. Eats a few right clicks. Rubik doesn't even want to hand away the kill. Wants to save it for Morphling. Very nice. That's a true support for you. Fade Bolt to fly out and lose on the run. But the coil coming in from the north. It's going to be Sidorall jumping right in with the orb, and they clean her up. So just like that, Union Gaming take it back in the bottom lane. Yeah, that, that is, this is about as bad as a lane as it can get for THD right now. Luckily, it is getting somewhat salvaged top as Nova is going to try to chase down two heroes here. Zoidberg as well as Fokar doing work on this tier 1 tower doesn't matter. All the meanwhile, Evil will grab the last end of the tower down bottom. His last hit's 44, pretty good at 8 minutes in. Might is pretty good at that timing as well. The tower even better and 3 kills and an assist going his way. So Union Gamers, they're giving farm to a hero that requires farm and is pretty good with farm. So... Uh, that's that's not good for THD right now. And of course, Sidorall, what a haste room to come in and take down that Luna as well, like you saw. Oh boy, what a rough game for Neofolk, my friend. I mean, we were we were expecting that Union Gaming were going to have a nice primary mid game going for themselves. We knew that they were going to definitely lay it on thick and make it really hard for THD. But I mean, there is not much hope to fall back on. There is no dark horse of a Luna to come back and get the reliable farm. She is still struggling, just barely pulling intense CS for herself. It's, it's a long road for her to try to even pull out a late game for this one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that farm that you should have at 10 minutes is right around 50 CS if you're in an okay lane. Even if you're a tough lane, you're just trying to get what you can. 40 is really 30 even, the benchmark would be. She's at 12 CS. She only has a Basilia. She only has Boots of Speed. So getting any sort of farm, it's going to take that much longer right now. I mean, at 10 minutes in, she's having the farm that she'd have at about 3. So just kind of keep that as an estimate as to where she should be in a couple minutes from now. All the meanwhile, that means she can't even fight because Eclipse. That's the only thing she can do, and she'll die very quickly in a team fight. Faka, they know that she's there. Now, PM looking for a lift. There it goes. Now, Fade Bolt. There's the Cold Feet. Dream Coil. Oh. Now it stops her as well. She might get last up. Not even necessary. AA with the chilling touch damage. Enough to get the kill. 6-2 to two the score. Ewo coming in to help out as well. They're going to try to four-man this tower. Oh boy. This is a dominating force from Union Gaming, and they don't even have the Ice Blast yet. So just imagine, things are only going to get even worse. It's one of the top Radiance five least creeps. Greg pulling out a negative stat for someone. Radiance That's something you typically see, but Greg doesn't care. <laughs> 
He's like, just look how the poor this Luna's doing. The BM stat from <laughs> the Greg. Larry, classic BM gentlemen. stat coming out from Greg. Very nice. I mean, like, it, it makes sense though. I, it was, it's just, it's. You understand though, it's not necessarily her fault that she had that yeah. rough lane. It's just a really disgusting, top disgusting aggressive tri lane. I mean, and you, you rarely see Morph in that kind of role, but it works because he has that high base damage. Yes, he is squishy if he gets caught out and he doesn't have the most, you know, strength morph, but it doesn't matter. All the meanwhile, stand-ins and everybody else from THD are roaming around mid, so they're all just with the casual loser or push back out. It's not even a problem. I got it, boys. Not even an issue. So. I mean, as we continue further, the fact that this Luna's got nothing, yes, she can, you know, stack up some Ancients and get those eventually, but I just feel as though Ewo's going to take this pretty late. In fact, he's going to have Boots of Travel already at 11 minutes in, because why not have Boots of Travel on a Morphling when you're getting free farm? No, it's... he's he's rolling in the dough. That's There's no question about that, but going back, on, I feel like part of this has to just be a testament to Union Gaming's draft and just how it was so puzzling to to not only us, but to everyone. And it just shows they weren't sure the lane assignments were going to go. I guess they were just still kind of expecting a solo offlaner to be there, but they just ran face first into this tri lane that has so much aggressive power, especially with that chilling touch. They just could not compete with it, and they couldn't really figure out an audible play to try to switch Radiant things up. And this is going to be now the steepest hill to climb to come back into it. Yeah, and as you can yeah. see right now, it's 12 minutes in, and there's a 5,000 gold week coming out for Union Gamers. And I've said this many times, it's not insurmountable. Usually you can see gold leads like 10k this time, but this game still feels really in favor of UG. They've got a 1500 experience lead on top of that. The house is down. They're scratching for something, for anything to grasp a hold of. And right now, Neofolk, he is thanking his he's thanking his deity right now because he's getting free farm under a tower for the first time in maybe 12 minutes since the game started even. You see THD there, smoked up, they're looking for a pickoff. PM's gonna run right into him. There's the Hex Ice Blast flying through, missing the mark. There's the Shackles going. Cold Feet, the CS is gonna be in some trouble right now. Now PMJ getting caught out. One for two, one for one, excuse me. The Doom is up on Sidorall. He cannot contribute to the fight. Ewo's trying to right click down. Jericho's here as well, hashed the bomb. About to be the bomb and fall down. Viper Strike coming through. Zoinberg getting kited, can't do anything else. Two for one trade, the buyback came through from PM. Now Strength Morph, 1987, he's down. The Illusion Orb, the right clicks from Nova, that's enough. Telkinesis is up. Vaka getting chased, he's silenced, he's donezo, McDonezo. That'll be three, I believe four down for THD when it's all said and done. But Union Gamers, they lose one, they buy back, and they get right back into it. Well worth it. Speedy bots, it seems like the tri lane has paid off. Uh, this is the fastest BOT time on record. 12 minutes for a Morphling ever. Yep, and that's not even, that's 6.80 and before, ladies and gentlemen. That's a ridiculous time. I mean, not that many more things go for BOTs, to be fair, but still. Radiant's certainly impressive tower. coming out from Ewo. He's broken a couple records already uh, in the past game as well on that OD. So now looking for a tier 1 tower, they take the tier 1 mid. That's done. Nova with his treads up right now. Other items are going to be coming across the map. We'll check those out. Next going to be done soon for Zoidberg, but guess what? Oh, he's going to get arrowed as it was stolen. Now they're going to try to fight this Evo. Going to right-click him down. Do they have enough damage? Telkinesis is going to bring him back. The Fade Bolt as well. Wait for him to finish it off. No, TP rotation. Evo doesn't want to be that brave. He will back off instead. And uh, the point I was making, there's going to be a mech up for Viper. It's actually up now. Other items coming through. We, there's a Midas on 1987. That recovery Midas coming through. But I don't know. They're, the items for THG are going to be far, far inferior to UG you, right now. Especially considering they haven't had the opportunity to come together and even get a tower for themselves. This Dragon Knight now has level 2 Elder Dragon and has yet to make use of it taking down a tower. They've been on their defense pretty much the majority of this game. They've been crippled in the bottom lane. This Luna not finding much farm. Everywhere else it's been kind of pretty bleak. So they're just trying to get some momentum going for themselves. They need to come together. If that means dropping boards and dragon form for a tower, so be it. You yeah. need to get something in your pocket. You gotta get something going right now. And honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to the DK pick. And a lot of people value this hero still very highly. But it seems like the meta has shifted and people don't want to pick him as much. He just doesn't pump out that much damage except for his Breathe Fire. And then that is not exactly what you need. Yes, he can push down towers sort of fast with Elder Dragon. But 
it, it just seems like he wasn't helping out in that bottom line. Like you said, they needed reinforcements. He didn't come there for reinforcements. He didn't help out. He didn't rotate down, which is something he did in the last game and failed at doing so. Now Luna has a Midas 15 minutes in. If this game goes 50 minutes, will they be able to take it? I still don't think so because you have a Morphling who's just as late as a carry. I mean, Evo can do a lot of damage. He can't even go for a shotgun. So now it is going to be a tier one tower going top. Blink forward, Sidorall. There's the silence. There's going to be the coil. There's the jaunt through. The arrow does hit on Zoidberg. The Serpent Wards are up. They're shackling up some heroes. Doesn't matter. One down already. Fade Bolt, 1987 lifted. Nice. Keep the shock doing work. Not enough, though. They've got a mech going. Vistius, he's done. Four down across the map. All while that's happening, Ewo picks up a solo kill. 15 minute GG. UG, they shook off whatever was happening in that first game, and they take it to THG, splitting the series 1 1. Very nice. I caught that pick off in the bottom lane. It was all about Ewo waiting in the jungle. Stay in the trees. A good. Uh, input there from high high as he waited out the right opportunity made the waveform in and just luna desperately pulling out the eclipse it was not enough and ended up getting picked off and that was more than enough quick game 16 minute gg no pauses so everyone gets to drive home sober <laughs> lucky for them we had about five or so in the previous game and man you guys were getting tipsy at that point i'm sure but that is it. That's going to be it for the action tonight, guys. A great start to Season 2 of the ADL. Day number one is in the books. We will be back tomorrow. I will drum up the uh, I will drum up the, uh, excuse me, the schedule for tomorrow real quick. In the meantime, guys, make sure you check us out at highground.tv. That is our website. Make sure you purchase up the ticket. It is $3.99. You get this beautiful HUD that you're seeing right now in-game. Great stuff there, of course. Shout-outs to SteelSeries, the sponsor, for providing what we could do for this tournament right now. As of tomorrow's games, we've got Wednesday, yes. April 9th. Do you want to do it? You got it ready to go? Oh, I had it ready to go, Ma. I'm just being a great co, but if you're on it, please, it's your show. You just go for it, Please, I, I, I insist, Kyle Guy. Okay, well, tomorrow, starting at about 7 p.m. Eastern time, or 1 if you're on the CET, it's going to be Sneaky Nick's Assassins. That's right, Mike. Fluff, the old Liquid Squad coming together with Sanan Ush, a great team right there. They're going to be going against Union Gaming, as we saw right here. Pull out the quick victory. That should be a great matchup. Following that one at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we got Shadows of the Past with the fantastic name. I believe that's Ryubora's and Squad going to be going against Isurus Gaming. So good couple of matchups. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really looking forward to seeing Fluff and Mike play in that series. Once again, a two-game series tomorrow. We'll be back here for you at 7 o'clock on the dot, ladies and gentlemen, at twitch.tv slash American Dota League. Make sure you guys follow us here. Follow us at American Dota on Twitter. For the casters, I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. We're High Ground TV. Highground.tv is our website. Check it out. We got a lot of cool stuff coming for you. Things you should definitely check out. Once again, I am Mott. Follow me at twitter.com slash Mott32. With me tonight, my lovely co-caster, Kyle Guy. You can follow him at twitter.com slash Kyle Guy. And our stats man. Thank you so much, Greg. Twitter.com slash what is hip TV. Let us know how you felt about the stats and the cast in general. Give us some tweets. Give us some chat feedback as well. Uh, Kyle Guy, any shout-outs before we head out of here, man? Nope, just thanks to, to for you for having me on. Thanks to Greg, you know, High Ground TV, I'm having a lot of fun. ADL, of course, for letting us have the opportunity to uh, cast this for them. It's been a great time. I'm excited. We got uh, day one in the books. Let's let, let's keep the momentum going. And guys, make sure you tell your friends about the tournament. Yes, you know, we don't have EG and C9, but we love the viewership if we can get it, guys. Of course, a lot of great games, a lot of great casting. And, well, with that being said, we'll, guys, let you take off. We'll put a couple of commercial breaks up and uh, stick around and chat to talk and, of course, play some great music. But as it stands, we're done here, everybody. Have a good night, guys. Take it easy. Take care.